Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. And today I want to talk about a topic um, that I think is really important for people to be aware of. We always talk about dating. We talk about relationships. We talk about, you know, why did they lose interest and everything like that. But one of the things that you really have to be aware of is if you are in a controlling relationship, okay? And the reason that I'm doing this topic is that so many people are in a toxic or controlling relationship and they don't even realize it. They're not woke. They're not aware as to what is going on. And they're in a relationship with somebody that is not only toxic, but could also be a very dangerous situation. All right. Now, the reason that I'm talking about this is because when you see a lot of cases, you watch Dateline, you watch 48 Hours, you watch a lot of these crime stories that deal with crimes of passion, okay? Or when a relationship goes bad and could lead to murder, okay? You are not only in a toxic relationship, there's all kinds of toxic relationships, you guys. You know, there's all all the subcategories of toxic relationships. You could be in a toxic relationship where you're dealing with a passive aggressive covert narcissist. Okay. This is somebody who doesn't tell you how they feel and they try to hurt you other ways by being passive aggressive. Okay. Then you have other kinds of, um, toxicity in relationships where you're also dealing with people that, you know, are difficult. These people are difficult. You could be doing everything the right way. You could be having an argument with them and, you know, putting all the facts on the table and trying to explain your point of view. And these people will never acknowledge what you're saying. Okay. And yes, a lot of them are narcissistic. They don't necessarily have to be narcissistic to be toxic. But the point is, the the point is, there is no resolution with these people, okay? You're in a toxic relationship. They don't want to see your side. They don't want to admit they're wrong. And that's very common too when it comes to narcissists. They do not want to acknowledge that they're wrong. That's why when you're dealing with a narcissist or you're in a toxic relationship, what do they do? They flip the blame on you, okay? If you're in a relationship and you know that you are not wrong regarding a specific topic and you try to talk to your partner about it, you try to explain things to them and they're always flipping the blame on you and saying, no, that's you, that's you, or I cheated because of you. You are dealing with a narcissistic, toxic person and you need to be aware of it. Now, the reason that I'm getting into all of this is because, number one, you got to recognize you're dealing with a toxic person. That's first and foremost. Now, I will tell you why a lot of people don't necessarily realize that they are in a toxic relationship or a toxic relationship that could end up dangerous or deadly why Why do they not see these signs, you guys? Like later on, you, you see stories in the news. You see people that were in toxic or abusive or controlling relationships. And you say to yourself, why did they stay with that person? Why did they wait so long? Why didn't they get out? I'll tell you why they didn't get out. Because the person that they were dealing with knew how to push and pull. What's push and pull? Push and pull is basically when these people know how to kind of, it's kind of like they give the love bombing to that person. They give that person a lot of attention, a lot of love. And then on the other side, they're very mean, cruel, and vindictive. Okay. That's why you have relationships that are highs and lows. When sometimes I've had people come to me, they've had relationships where the person was the most loving, wonderful person in the world, loving, most wonderful person in the world, and the next day the person could be cruel as anything, okay? Even getting physical with that person. So this is why I tell you, 
If you are in a, one of those kind of relationships, you need to get out because it doesn't get better. If you study these crime stories that you see on TV, okay, or in the news, and you see, you know, somebody ended up dead, somebody was shot, somebody was strangled, you know, a lot of these crimes of passion or um, a lot of these kinds of stories, a lot of the people are killed by strangulation because it's, it's a personal thing where they strangle the person, all right? They just, they snap, they just snap. But the point that I'm trying to get through to you guys is this, you are not going to change these people. Let me say it again. All right. You are not going to change these people. And if you are in that type of relationship, you need to get out, get out. All right. And stop making excuses for that person. And I don't care if that person comes to you the next day and is loving and caring and and showing you love bombing you and showing you all this affection and saying they're sorry. I don't care that that person has potential to really hurt you and you need to recognize it and get out of that relationship. But here's the thing that you guys have to understand and You have to realize this, all right? Because this is so important. This is so important in so many relationships that have ended up where some person got killed in the relationship. When you recognize, number one is recognizing you're in that toxic relationship. And number two is knowing how to get out of that toxic relationship. One of the things I don't advise is that you go to that person and you tell them, well, I'm just going to leave you. I'm just going to leave you. And, you know, you're trying to get back at them and and hurt them. And you're you're trying to tell them, you know what, Uh, I'm leaving you cold and this and that. If you're dealing with somebody who's a dangerous person, a toxic person, okay, you do not confront that person and tell them that you are going to leave them at that moment. Because the minute you do that, you put your life in danger, okay? How do I know that? Because I've seen it time and time again with these stories where uh, it ended up, it was a, a toxic, abusive relationship, okay? And one person goes to the other person and says, I don't want to be with you anymore. And then what happens? Boom, that person is dead, okay? Okay. That person is dead because that person snaps. They snap. You see it on the show Snapped. You see it on Dateline. You see it on 48 Hours. You see it on all the crime stories. When are you the most in danger? The minute you want to leave that relationship and you tell that person. I've seen people and stories where somebody has actually not even told the person and just kind of left that person and that other person was stalking them and everything else. So when you realize that you're in a dangerous, toxic relationship and you need to get out, number one, you need that support system in place, okay? You need, you know, everything lined up. You need to to know how to get out of that without that person, that toxic person knowing what you're doing, Okay, that means having other people there to support you and have your back and and any, you know, everything else in line as well. If you need to contact the police or whatever and make people aware of what's going on for your own safety and do whatever you have to do for your own safety. Okay, and get out. And once you're in a safe place, then, you know, then you could broach the topic and just let that person know, listen, this isn't working out, whatever. But that's when you're in a safe place. You're away from that person. That person can't get to you. All right. You have to be sure that that person can't get to you. All right. And it really depends on who you're dealing with because there's some instances where people are very dangerous, where they will stalk you when you're going to work or stalk your family's house and stuff like that. And in those cases, you need protection. You need protection. But the the point I want to get back to is this. Recognizing that you are in a toxic relationship, you guys. Now, this is something that I need to bring up. 
This is something that I would tell my own daughter, okay, or my sons, because you could be in a toxic relationship. Men, men have been in toxic relationships as well, where they've dealt with women that were, you know, very possessive, very controlling, stalked them, all right, and, and have murdered them as well. So the, the point is this, you guys. Number one, you have to recognize it. You have to stop making excuses for these people. There's boundaries involved. This is why we talk about boundaries in relationships all the time. There's different boundaries that people cross. And if you don't check that person in the very beginning, it keeps getting worse because people will test you and push your boundaries. So what do I mean by this? What do I mean by this? That What I mean by this is, first of all, let's say you're in a relationship and the person says to you something to the effect of, oh, well, okay, you bitch, or something along those lines. Okay? So now you know that they're, they're, they're using profanity and they're calling you names, right? Now you know that, you know what? You have to check that person right then and right there that they are not to talk to you like that. And if they do it again, you have to leave. You have to leave. Now, the other thing that I want to bring up to you is this. If you're in a relationship that is toxic, that is turning from emotional abuse into physical abuse. Now, physical abuse can start with anything. It could start with a little push. It could start with a little sh uh, shove. It could start with a slap across the face or a scratch. If you deal with anything like that, you've got to get out. There is no walking back to that because that is how it starts. That is how the physical abuse starts. You are dealing with somebody who does not have control, okay? You are dealing with someone who has no control if they have to get physical with you. I don't care what you say to them, okay? I don't care if you curse out their mother, all right? If somebody puts their hand on you, puts their hand on you in any way, shape, or form, you have to get out of that relationship, okay? Because if you don't, the next time is going to be something worse because you stayed for, for the first incident of abuse that turned physical. The first, it, you know, when people are physically abusive, they don't start out by, you know, beating the crap out of you. They start out small. What do I mean by small? They may push you. They may shove you. They may slap you. That's what I mean by they start or poke you or something like that. All right. They don't start out when you're in an abusive relationship, you know, the first time beating the crap out of you. Why? Because they're testing you to see how far they can get with you. That's why I tell you, you check people from the beginning. And if you're dealing with somebody that's very abusive or has the potential for violence, you need to get out of there. Because if you don't get out of there, you're going to deal with much worse down the road. Because this person is going to feel more and more confident that they could get away with it, all right? And, and it's going to progress and be even worse. The other thing that you have to look at, you guys, is you have to look at that person's childhood, how they were raised, okay? Did they grow up in a violent household? It doesn't necessarily mean that people that grow up in violent households end up being violent, but you have to see what have they learned, what do they know? How do they view relationships? Are you dealing with somebody who has no problem putting their hands on you? Okay? How did their parents treat each other? Is this what they saw growing up? Okay? And people could go either way. They could either become like their parents if their parents were in a violent relationship, or they could say, I will never be like that. Okay? I will never put my hand on a woman because I saw what my mother went through or something like that. So that's why I always, you know, in my podcast, I try to educate and teach people basically how to understand human beings, all right? Whether it's male or female, N understanding people. People are complex. It's not that simple, 
all right? That's why people get in relationships and they, they end up being in violent relationships or toxic relationships or something like that. And they say to themselves, how the hell did I get into this position? Well, why did you get in that position? Because you didn't study the person. You did not know who you were dealing with. You didn't recognize that that person was toxic or dangerous or something along those lines. And we see it again and again. All right. We see it in the sense that, you know, what's going on in current events. All right. Like, for instance, in this current event with with the Long Island girl, Gabby Petito, she was in a toxic relationship. Why is it a toxic relationship? Because they got physical. They got physical. There are reports that he was slapping her you know, and she was also hitting him back as well. At that point, that girl should have been separated and sent back home to her family, okay? But what do we have now? We have a situation where the girl is now dead. Now, we are not accusing her boyfriend because innocent until proven guilty, all right? But it doesn't look good for somebody that is, you know, running away and on the lam here, and and this is just very typical of a lot of cases out there, okay? The point I'm trying to make is this. The minute, the minute you find that you're in one of these relationships, you guys, and you there's any form, any form of any kind of physical altercation, you have got to leave that person, you have got to leave that person. Now, other people will disagree with me. And I will say to you this. You let that, if you are going to stay in a relationship like that, you have to say, let's say that person, you know, shoved you or pushed you or slapped you. You have got to put that boundary up and tell that person, you ever do that again. You ever do that again, you will not see me again. And not only that, I'll press charges against you, okay? You got to let this person know that you are not playing, all right? You are not playing, all right? You, personally, I think you should walk away from the relationship. But I've had people come and say, well, you know, it was a one-time thing. It starts out as a one-time thing. And then it, it progresses into something more and more. Why? Because you took it. Because you took it and now you're going to be somebody's punching bag when you get into a, uh, you know, into the nitty gritty thing, nitty gritty of things. Now you're starting to see that person for who they really are. They're not that loving, kind person that was telling you how much they love you and this and that. That is not the real person. You know how you know who the real person is? When you see them angry, Okay. When you see your partner angry, that's when you're going to see the real person, who they really are. That's when they're going to come out and they're going to say really mean, cruel, nasty things to you, okay? And in some cases, if you're dealing with a very violent person, they're going to get physical with you. And the minute they get physical with you is the minute you got to, you know, you've got to get away from that, okay? Okay. You don't sit there and go back toe to toe with a person like that because you're not going to win. You're not going to change them. You have to walk away from it. Okay. And stop thinking about, oh, how loving and wonderful they are. No, no. Okay. I don't care how loving and wonderful they are. They're dangerous. They put their hands on you. You need to get away from somebody like that, but you don't tell the person. Okay. You, like when you're in the heat of an argument with them and you're going back and forth, that is not when you tell them you're going to leave them. It's when you're away from that person and you're in a safe haven and you know that you're safe with other people and you have your support system. That's when you, you let that person know, or you don't say anything. You just, you know, by, by not communicating at all, you're letting them know I am done. I am out. Okay. All right. Or, you know, if you have to communicate by phone or text or whatever, you just, you know, you don't get emotional. You don't call names or anything like that. You just let them know, listen, I'm not going to be in a relationship like that. That's it, you know, and keep it short, sweet, and that's it. All right. But you do that 
when you're not around that person. Because I'm telling you, you guys, if you're dealing with somebody who's abusive, emotionally, physically, and controlling, all right? The other thing is these controlling people. These controlling people, what do they do? They, they try to alienate you. They try to separate you from your friends and family. Why do they do that? Because they don't want you having that support system. Because they know that if you have your support si system of your friends and family, you can walk away from them. And these type of people want to control you. They want to tell you what you can and can't do. They want... They don't want you talking to somebody. Why are you looking at that person? Why are you doing that? If you're dealing with somebody like that, you're dealing with somebody who possibly could be dangerous down the road depending on who they are. Depends on the person and the, the level of control um, issues that they have. That's why if you're dealing with somebody, let's say in the beginning, you know, in the beginning, these people are, are very charming, very wonderful. You say to yourself, oh my goodness, you know, he's showing me so much attention or she's showing me so much attention. This is so refreshing after dealing with these guys that, you know, you're lucky if they call you back. Well, the other extreme is if you're dealing with the controlling partner, somebody that comes on really strong and is is going to control your every move. Why didn't you call me at nine o'clock on the dot? Why was it five minutes after nine? Okay. Somebody who puts you down. These type of people, they will put you down. They will rip your ego out, okay? Why do they do that? Because they want control. They're very narcissistic, okay? It's all about control. They want the power, the power over you, all right? The minute you take the power away from them, in other words, you're. let's say you're in a very violent, toxic relationship, the minute that you try to take that power away and you say, well, you know what? I'm leaving you. I don't need to take this crap. I'm out of here. That's when these people, depending on who you're dealing with, I'm not saying everybody, but in a lot of cases, that's when these people snap out and they lose control and they will, they will hurt you. And in some cases, it could end deadly. It's always when the person is, is telling the other person, I'm going to leave you, or that person knows that you're going to leave them, that you are in most danger, okay? This is why I tell you, if you're in that type of relationship, do not let that toxic person know you're leaving them till you're in a safe haven, till you have your support system, till you have, you know, law enforcement or whoever you need for protection, okay? And beware too, because once this person knows you left them, and I'm talking about somebody that's very violent, they could stalk you. They could watch your house. They could stalk your, your children. They could stalk your family. I've seen it done, you guys, all right? And the reason that I'm so emphatic about this is because this happens a lot. Every day you pick up the newspaper, there's another story about this. Why? Because people are in toxic relationships and they stay in them without leaving, okay? So you listen to me when I tell you, all right? Have I been in toxic relationships? Yes, I have. Yes, I have, okay? And I could tell you in one particular relationship I was in that if I didn't leave that relationship, I could have ended up dead myself. I was in a relationship where I had somebody pin me up against the wall with their hands around my neck, all right? So I, I was very lucky at the time to have got out the way I did. So this is why I'm telling you, all right? You can't keep going back to these people because your, your luck is going to run out. And, you know, you're putting your life on the line. So I don't care how much you, you sit there and you look at the romantic side. You need to look at the evil side and see just how dangerous this person is and stop letting it progress to that level. A lot of these people that end up dead have let things go. That's why they got to where they got to, okay? There was another case too with Alexis Sharkey. She was in an abusive relationship with her husband who used to choke her out. And then what happens? What happens, you guys? She got to a point where she wanted to leave that marriage, all right? This was a case down in Texas. She was in an abusive relationship. 
she had told close family, friends, and everything, like she wanted to leave the marriage and everything. And and no sooner than a little after she it was known that she wanted to leave, her body was found naked, strangled down the road, okay? They still haven't uh, solved that case. But, you know, it doesn't look good, all right? She stayed too long. She let her husband know that she was leaving him and everything when she was dealing with a violent person. And you put yourself at danger. Now, nobody is accusing the husband or anything because people are innocent until proven guilty. But when you look at it from a, you know, you're speculating and you're looking at it and you're seeing prior cases where this kind of scenario or situation has happened, you say to yourself, there's a pattern here. There's a pattern of where the abuse turned deadly. And the reason that I'm doing this podcast is because I want to implore on other people, okay, that are in these kind of toxic relationships to recognize the danger signs so that they can get out safely and not end up a statistic or end up on the cover of a national newspaper, you guys, all right? This is why I'm telling you, recognize toxicity in relationships. Recognize people that are toxic. A toxic person will always make you feel like crap, all right? How does the person that you're with make you feel? But the the reason that, you know, these people, you don't recognize them all the time is because when they're good, they're really good, okay? And they're loving and everything like that. Like I had a girlfriend. She was in a very, very toxic relationship. This guy was so, so loving, but this guy also had an evil, wicked side, okay? Like she would see him like on a Friday night and they would spend the night together. He'd be loving and everything like that. You know, they had wonderful sex and he was loving her and telling her how much he loved her. And then the next day at five o'clock in the morning, he's flipping on the bed with his hands around her neck, asking her who she's texting or who's, who's you know, who she's talking to or accusing her of cheating because he was a paranoid nut, all right? That's the true him, all right? And that's a relationship that she should have got out of, all right? She finally did get out of that relationship, but it took her a couple of tries to really see just how dangerous this guy could be, all right? So remember, if you're going to leave a relationship like that, do not tell the other person you're leaving, okay? Get to your safe haven your, get your support system in order without that other person knowing, okay? Because they will try to stop you and they will get mad and they will try to hurt you if they're very abusive. I have to bring this, this stuff up, you guys, because there's a lot of people, a lot of young girls, doesn't necessarily have to be young girls, it could be older, okay, that are dealing in relationships or even some guys that have abusive girlfriends and wives as well that could be very dangerous that, you know, flip out the minute they're going to leave them and pick up a gun and shoot the guy, okay? You have to be aware of the person that you're with, their, their potential for what they could do to you. That's why you got to look at those red flags. And when people cross a certain boundary, all right, you guys, you know, whether it's a slap, a push, a shove, you have to get out of there. You have to get out of there, okay? I had a situation when I was in my early 20s, when I was dating this guy, okay? We went out on a date. Um, I was going uh, to happy hour with the people that I worked with. Back then, I was working in the financial district, and everybody went to the New York seaport, right? And he was supposed to meet me afterwards. He met me because he, um, he was from Brooklyn or whatever, and, you know, I was living in the city. So he met me afterwards and he was a very controlling type of person. And we got into an argument and he's like, why did you have to meet your friends after work and everything like that? I don't know why you couldn't. So we got into it a little bit. And what does he do? What does he do? He pushed me where I fell back. Okay. This is on the street, New York City. He got mad and he did like one of those quick pushes in the front, you know, uh, the, the top of, you know, right under my neck, like, 
you know, to push somebody down, like a pu quick push. And it just happens like I went back and I, you know, fell on my ass or whatever. But I mean, it, he didn't push me that hard that he hurt me, but he pushed me. Okay. The bottom line is he pushed me. All right. He pushed me to a point where I stepped back and fell back. Okay. And then I said to myself after that, because I've seen abusive relationships all through my life, I said to myself, he's done. He's done. He's done. He's got to go. All right. This guy has got to go. All right. Because this is the onset of what will, this is the beginning. All right. Starts with a slap. Starts with a shove. The next thing you know, somebody's going to break your nose. The next thing you know, you could end up dead. And this actually happened to a girlfriend of mine when she was dealing with a very violent guy, okay? The first time he put over 100 stitches in her head by smashing her head on a glass table and told her, and he told her, if you tell anybody in the hospital, I will kill you and kill your daughter, okay? Okay. And she didn't say anything. She was fearing for her life. And, you know, she was not able to get away from him. And it turns out he showed up at her job and he shot her, killed her, and he shot himself. This was in the papers years ago, you guys. All right. Matter of fact, his girlfriend before her actually left the state to get away from him because he was he was a very dangerous guy to begin with. Anyway, he had a rap, an 18 page rap sheet. She was dealing with a very dangerous guy. All right. So the point is, all right, not everybody's like that. All right. Not everybody's like that. But I'm just saying, you know, they don't have to be a street thug to be dangerous. They could be Joe Wall Street and be dangerous. Okay. Okay. Uh, you know, I knew people even in the neighborhood where I grew up that were, you know, very successful businessmen, Wall Streeters that, you know, pushed their wife down the stairs, okay, because they were drunk and they were violent or whatever. So you can't say it has, you know, it's, you know, a socioeconomic thing as to whether somebody's going to be violent because it happens in all different levels, Okay, of economic classes. So, but you have to be aware of this, you guys. You have to be aware of this. You know, um, you know, my my family, my mother had friends as well. You know, when she was a young couple growing up in the suburbs of New York, one of her friends, her husband, was very successful Wall Street guy, and you know, she was like a trophy wife at the time, and he put a gun to her head. He didn't kill her, but he put a gun to her head. So this is, you know, this is the kind of shit that happens in real life, you guys. So if you find that you're in one of these kind of relationships, all right, that could be violent or something like that, you got to nip it in the butt in the very beginning. A slap, a push, a shove, Any anybody touches you, Get out of there. There there are no second chances. There are no second chances. All right? Listen to me when I tell you. All right? And and don't let these people fool you and come back and start crying. Uh, but I love you. It'll never happen again. It'll never. It'll happen again, you guys. It'll happen again. All right? Believe me when I tell you because I've seen it in other people's relationships. It will happen again. So I hope that helps you guys recognize those red flags. You know, somebody crosses your boundary. You got to check them in the beginning. Do not let something go. Stop giving too many chances. All right. The people that give all these chances are the people that end up in a bad place. All right. You want to give somebody a chance. All right. You give them one chance if they cross your boundaries. One chance. That's it. They break that one chance, they got to go, all right? Because that's their basic pattern, and that's what you're going to see, all right? And if you, don't, if you don't, if you don't cut it, then you will have to, then you did it to yourself. I'm sorry to say it, you did it to yourself. You got to walk away, you guys, all right? So I hope that helps you. If it did, please hit the subscribe button and share, and please share with your friends, okay? Awareness is key. If you have a friend that is in an abusive or toxic relationship, share the podcast with them, please, and make them aware. You could save somebody's life, all right? So I hope that helps you. Please share it, okay? Have a great day, guys. 
Audible is offering listeners a 30-day trial. Doesn't cost you anything. It's free 30-day trial. You get to select any book that you want on there and listen to it. They have books on there about breadcrumbing, love bombing, why did they lose interest, dating, relationship, any kind of book you're interested in and want to learn about, okay? You could listen to it in your car or if you're on the bus or the train. So go to my podcast description for the link at tinyurl.com backslash askyaznow and start your free trial. Are you having a problem in your dating or relationship life and you need a question answered? Well, go to my website. The link is in the podcast description and you'll see how you can ask Yaz a question and get it answered confidentially. So go to the podcast description and look for the link where it talks about how Yaz will answer your question.